Hi all, Mass Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this Shova Portable X-Ray Unit. It is the model or type SP103 made in Japan and it's rather special because it's just one contained unit. This just takes 230 volt in at 3 kilowatt power. It can output 100 kilovolts at 35 milliamps. Has everything contained inside. Controls, high voltage transformer, X-ray tube, collimator, everything in the small unit. It's the size of what you normally see in a head at the same ratings. So it would be rather interesting to see how compact this is or if it's really just not that well made, well shielded or it has this fine little shield up here, up here saying it's both dangerous to patient and operator. So let's take a closer look at that. And here we have it, the glorious Japan made X-ray unit. But first for this teardown, let's have a cup of coffee. Also check out the nice push button receive lightning mark. It's in the merchandise section. I love this mark, really. Hmm. Not that the coffee is any better, or of course this is good coffee, but it has nothing to do with the mark. Now, enough about the mark. So what we have here is this X-ray standalone system, portable system. Not quite sure of the manufacturing year, maybe we can see that on the inside, but it was last calibrated in 1999. Now the uh, controls for it is all here at the front, so it's a quite simple unit. We have a um, two off switches, not quite sure why, because this has no markings, so it just has a lot of settings here. Whereas the other one has second settings, so this is exposure time. 0.3 to 10 seconds and we have a yeah voltage and current selector switch here depending on how hard x-ray radiation you need we have a ready status lamp and we have a overheat lamp warning not quite sure what that maybe that's just ready x-ray and overheat so that's the x-ray has been added later on Seems to also have some status LEDs for the current uh, here, as these numbers correspond to the current settings we see here on the dial. There is a uh, meter for milliamps and a meter for yeah, alternating voltage, just with a red uh, button or red stripe. Not quite sure what that measures, if that's some kind of over voltage return from the head. Underneath we have the collimator. The collimator is the beam shaping device. And if we can see the moving parts inside here, it's simply just setting the aperture of the, uh, of the beam. So it's to nar narrow down how much radiation you're going to give the patient outside the area you want to take a picture of. It also comes with a small uh, tape measure. At the side here we have the 230 volt AC input, most likely some kind of remote control and a fuse. And other than that, the uh, whole unit is just encapsulated. So let's get it taken apart. Inside the collimator there was this little 12 volt 40 watt focus light with the yeah, silver screen on one part to direct the, the light. Uh, the light is then directed into a small mirror that can be seen at the bottom here. And what's actually fun here, you can see it's a complete mirror surface down there at the bottom. But if you notice right now, you can see there's some kind of rounded shape that the X-rays have over time actually damaged the mirror surface. As that is a complete mirror down there. That's quite funny to see. Other than that, the uh, collimator is just uh, yeah, two moving parts here to uh, shape the field. So uh, not much else to say about this. Just as it takes AC 12 volt for the bulb. We have black and red wire, the AC input voltage. We have yellow and orange, which I presume is the trigger. Oh. Violet and grey is the trigger, and yellow and orange is the AC supply to the collimator lamp. Fuse on the black line. It's all grounded to one big lead and brass chassis. So we have a very simple PCB sitting here on top of a uh, transformer. 
the uh, input voltage goes to this transformer, which has taps for 12 volt out and input taps for 100 up to 230, as you can use this in uh, Japan, uses a lower voltage than the rest of the world. I think it's actually 200 volt face to face, face to neutral, or is it face to face? Oh, well, it's at least a different than European standards. So at the front, we have the uh, unknown selector switch sitting here. So that seems to be the one with the most tabs down into the case here. That indicates that it has to be something with a tapped transformer. Whereas the uh, timing circuit only goes down to the PCB sitting here. And we have uh, a relay sitting there and a small selector switch sitting here. So I do suspect that this is some kind of voltage selector despite we have the smaller one sitting here in the middle. Unfortunately, there is no manual for this thing. So I really want to, um, to get this shielding off, find out uh, how that's built up, but we are most likely going to f find a oil-filled tank inside this with the high voltage power supply and voltage multipliers and x-ray tube sitting in one complete unit. So this is one of those things where you don't really know where to start because it's all soldered shut. Now there is some kind of port here at the side, most likely a uh, oil filling port. Or other than that, the seems to be a lid over here on the top side where the wires go in. So I think uh, the best uh, solution here is to uh, Try to get this port opened and see if we can pour the oil out. Judging from the age of this, um, yeah, did not really find any uh, date marks on the inside here. But um, I do not think it contains PCB. But I guess we'll have to do a test once we uh, open this up. So upon opening up the port, it is clear that this is the oil filling port. And uh, to test out if this is really PCB oil or mineral oil, you, you can do a simple uh, float test with regular water. So I'm just uh, going to use a syringe to uh, suck up some oil, then uh, add some water into it, and then depending on how I turn it, if the oil goes to the bottom, so it's heavier than the water, then it is a PCB oil. And if it floats in the water, it's a mineral oil. So that's a pretty easy and non-hazardous test to make. And as we can see, the oil actually floats on top of the water. Even when I turn it around. So that is actually just mineral oil. That's good news. And just see it's water coming out now the lightweight oil that floats on top of the water. So yeah, let's just continue by emptying this uh, enclosure and get it taken completely apart. Oh, that's actually interesting. The, um, the whole brass chassis here is actually the, the complete oil container. Just look, when pressing on the side here, I can get it to raise up. Wow. It did also seem a bit leaky at the bottom when I took off the LED shielding. But um, I will try to pour it into these two um, containers here and hopefully not spill too much all over the place. So let's get some oil cloths under here. If I can even lift it up now without compressing the chassis too much. Yeah, it's not hard to foresee how big of a mess this is going to be. But uh, yeah, no one else is going to do this for me. Not exactly lightweight, so yeah. Okay, that, that actually went pretty smooth. First bucket. Probably contains a lot more than I uh, imagined it would. I was thinking that two of these cans would be uh, just about enough. Let's see. 
it should contain enough components to not be okay so that's another one gotta find another bucket and here we go again okay so it's starting to uh, emptying out now so now I actually have to leave it upside down for at least half a day or maybe a day maybe I'll film again tomorrow in order to make sure that as much oil as possible have been drained out from all the components inside so I'll just turn that around now you can also see that it does contain quite a lot of dirt so it's not exactly clean anymore after some 30 years in operation so what were you watching on YouTube the other day oh just some random guy from Denmark balancing a x-ray transformer trying to not spill oil over all, all over the place a couple of hours must be enough for this oil to drip out enough to open up the can I am too impatient to wait until tomorrow so let's just tip it over a bit I would say this weighs a good at least 10 15 kilograms so it's not it's not just that easy to to handle so I think my strategy for opening this up would be to um, either desolder or pry that open, open all around here where it seems to have been the last place it's uh, been put together desoldering it would probably take a lot of energy into as this is effectively as one big heat sink so i'm not even sure my largest uh, soldering iron can can do this but uh, i'll give it a try and if that fail fails i'll just uh, have to pry it open with a hammer that went extremely much faster than expected so um, absolutely no problem just hammering it open once uh, you just get into the seam, then it's just uh, very easy to open it, just like a canned piece of food. So let's see how this comes off. There. And here we have it. Nice big uh, iron core transformer here. As this is uh, mains uh, driven, so it's uh, of course a uh, mains frequency transformer sit sitting here. Some more uh, LED shielding. Also down around uh, the uh, X-ray tube that we have here. Have some kind of uh, plastic holders uh, just keeping it in place. Some more plastic down underneath here. So perhaps once I get all this out, we can see the uh, the multiplier. Everything has come apart by now. So we have a transformer, mains fed, most likely uh, center tapped, where the core is uh, the center tap. And that is usually done in order to minimize the potential difference that you have between your high voltage winding and the metal core. If this is a 100 kilovolt um, transformer, then you would have. 100 kilovolt to core voltage difference that's very hard to insulate whereas if you ground the middle of the transformer to this and you have a plus and a minus side of your transformer you only have a 50 kilovolt potential difference between each of the outputs and the core and this one was the anode connection for the x-ray tube then we have the other end over here which goes into the cathode 
The filament transformer is uh, basically a step down transformer. Again, mains iron core. And as we can see in here, oh, it's hard to make out, but some very thick uh, copper wire on the inside. Have uh, two primary leads here, 230 volt AC. And then we have the X ray tube itself, which is again mounted inside another enclosure. Ah, okay, that's actually screwed in place there. Uh, seems like it's uh, just sitting with the filament connections there. There we have it. Seems like a custom base. It's a uh, Toshiba D205B X-ray tube. And if we get a view of the anode here, it does have uh, visible traces in the anode plate. So uh, it has seen quite a lot of use. So a quick recap of what did I get out of taking this apart. Some nice uh, threaded long rods uh, from the enclosure. I would say around maybe uh, one to two kilograms of uh, brass that just goes to recycling. And for the lead, I would say we had maybe two to three, four kilograms of uh, lead shielding. Some of it is uh, some very nice big pieces, so uh, I'm going to keep that. Whereas uh, the smaller cutout parts here, that's just going to scrap. So for a future project, I think I will actually keep the um, controls here, along with the transformer. Get this uh, built into another box. And you can always argue it's uh, one hell of a job to um, take apart an oil-filled transformer, just to rebuild it into another oil-filled transformer. But I wanted to get rid of all the filament transformer, the x-ray tube, all the stuff that I do not need. And I think the timer feature could actually be quite fun for something like uh, yeah, making a public display of a Jacob's Ladder uh, that you can just set it for maybe 4 to 10, 8 sec seconds. You can have a push button and then it would not get overloaded if you just yeah, put a little time on, on how often you can also push that button. I really hope you enjoyed seeing this teardown of this complete portable X-ray system from Shova. And I ended up with a nice 100 kilovolt high voltage transformer with a uh, some control logic, we can call it. So, I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Until next time, see ya.